Greetings, brothers and sisters of the Discalce Carmelite Secular Order and any uh, others who are interested in the Secular Order who are looking at these videos. Um, this is video number 58 in this series um, that I'm making about your, your identity, your identity, your presence, your uh, purpose, your vocation to be members of the Order and participate in the order's presence in the world, to bring to the world, to bring to the church and to bring to the world, uh, the teaching, the message the, uh, of Teresa of Jesus and John of the Cross, as they experience the, the, the one Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we're studying the constitutions of Rupture number 23. 23 is a long number and uh, to me, it's a very dense number, very dense, very, very, when I say dense, I mean there's a lot of things in this number 23 that have a, a very important meaning. Uh, the constitutions, the words that are in the constitutions are the words that are in there for, for a purpose. And that's what I've been trying to explain. It's why does it say what it says? What are the, what are the consequences of what it says? What are the limits of what it says? Uh, so we'll look at this number 23 now, which is very important. I'm going to put in the title uh, some Latin words in, in the title of this broadcast, of this uh, particular video. Some very important words. Lex orandi, lex credendi, lex vivendi, lex orandi, lex uh, credendi, lex vivendi. And as we go through uh, this number 23, I'll point out what the importance of those three Latin sentences, three Latin phrases are. Lex orandi, lex uh, credendi, lex vivendi. The law, or the law of prayer, is the law of belief. And the law of belief is the law of living. So I will read this, this number 23, has to do with the importance of the liturgy, the, the, the liturgy in the life of a secular order discussed Carmelite. It's also the, law, the, the same things can be said about the friars and about the nuns. The liturgy has a most special place. It comes from the rule of St. Albert. The, the rule of St. Albert instructed the monks, the friars, or the hermits that lived on Mount Carmel, they instructed them to participate in the liturgical life of the church, in, uh, both with the liturgy of the Eucharist, Mass, and the liturgy of the Hours. Uh, the the the, Ibarra, the, the um, divine office, liturgy of the uh, liturgy of the hours, those things were of the essence of being a Carmelite from the beginning. Twenty three. I'll read it. I'll read it out loud and we'll go through it, and then we will go back through it and explain certain things about this uh, this the importance of the place of the liturgy in the life of a discalced Carmelite, secular, non, friar. The personal prayer, the personal prayer life of the Carmelite secular, understood as friendship with God, is also nourished and expressed in the liturgy, an inexhaustible font for the spiritual life. Liturgical prayer enriches personal prayer, and this personal prayer, in its turn, gives a lively expression to liturgical participation. In the secular order, a special place is given to the liturgy understood as God's word celebrated in active hope after having received it by faith and the commitment to live it in effective love. The sacraments, especially the Eucharist and reconciliation, need to be lived as signs and instruments 
of the freeing action of God and as an encounter with the Paschal Christ present in the ecclesial community. They are grace-giving structures in opposition to the structures for sin in society. Carmelite seculars strive to discover in liturgical prayer the presence of Christ and the Holy Spirit living and demanding something of us in everyday life. In the liturgical year, they will experience the mysteries of redemption which inspire collaboration in bringing about God's plan. The Liturgy of the Hours, for its part, brings the secular Carmelite into communion with the prayer of Jesus and the Church. The importance of liturgy. Why is the liturgy important? Lex orandi. The lex orandi, the law of prayer. What it is we do in prayer becomes the law of belief, the law of credendi, credo, creed. Theology flows from the liturgy, the liturgy, because the liturgy is identified in certain rites, and R-I-T-E-S, certain rites, certain things that are done that guarantee that what we are doing is the liturgy of the Roman Catholic Church. We baptize in the same way. We baptize according to how it's prescribed to baptize. Confirmation, the same. Uh, penance, reconciliation, the same. Eucharist, the same. Knowing to the sick, the same. Marriage, the same. There's, there, there are elements in which we participate in the life of Jesus, in the life of the Trinity, and in which the Trinity participates in our life. And in a liturgy, we celebrate that presence. That presence, that relationship, um, guides what we believe. And guiding what we believe, the belief then becomes the substance, substance, substance or the, the, the driving force for what we live, how we live. Why do we live the way we live? Uh, you know, Pope Francis is very, uh, has repeated it a number of times, uh, for, for especially to priests in different conferences. People go to Mass because they want to receive the Eucharist. The fullest participation in the, in, the, in the liturgy of the Eucharist is to receive Holy Communion. That's the fullest, that's the fullness of participation. Everything should lead to that, and everything comes from that. The Second Vatican Council describes the liturgy, the liturgy, as the source and summit, the origin and the high point of our experience as Christians, as experiences of following Christ. We follow Christ because he's present. So the presence, in English we say, the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist is the real presence. We, f we don't follow a Christ who's absent. We follow a Christ who is present. And, we, and it, it, it's in the liturgy that we experience. We have the opportunity to experience in faith, maybe not emotionally, psychologically, or physically, but in faith we, we, we experience the presence of Jesus. The personal prayer life of the Carmelite secular understood as friendship with God. That's the beginning of this number 23. So we go, we go directly to St. Teresa's definition of prayer, Book of Her Life, Chapter 8, Paragraph 5. Mental prayer, in my opinion, is a dealing in friendship. Dealing in friendship. Taking time frequently to be alone with the one whom we know loves us. 
dealing in friendship. So we understand it's dealing in friendship. And the, the liturgy is, is extremely important to that possibility of being aware that we are loved. We don't pray in order to be loved. We pray because we are loved by God. Jesus already showed us through his passion, death, and resurrection, through his life. He already showed us the importance that he gave to our salvation, to our health. So the personal prayer of the, the Carmelites secular, understood as friendship with God, is also nourished, found, source, and expressed, summit, in the liturgy an inexhaustible font for the spiritual life. To read through the Mass for the day, each day. If, you, if, you're, if you're able to go to Mass each day, if you're able to, if some may not be able because of work or, or family uh, complications or commitments, but if you read, you can, you can, you can still uh, get a copy or look on the internet or, or if you have a missile, daily missile, uh, the, the, with the readings in it, you can still read through the liturgy of the day. And when you do read through the liturgy, don't just read the readings. Read the prayers of the Mass. The prayers of the Mass are wonderful. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, they are, I always tell the people, the priest has to learn how to read the prayers of the Mass catechetically. Catechetically, catechesis. Um, if, if the priest celebrates the, the Eucharistic prayer and recites it in a way that it teaches people what we believe, it the, 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 in the Eucharistic prayer, it's the Son speaking to the Father and gathering us in the Holy Spirit to be able to participate in that life of the Trinity. The Eucharist is participation in the life of the Trinity here on earth. The liturgy is an inexhaustible. It never runs out of energy. Inexhaustible font for the spiritual life. We are a liturgical church. We are a Eucharistic church. We are a liturgical people. We are a Eucharistic people. And when I say we are liturgical, I don't necessarily mean that we're all about the songs that are sung or the banners that are placed, or whether you use an organ or a guitar, it's the prayers of the Mass is what is the liturgy. There are the things that accompany the prayers of the Mass, whether we sing in Gregorian chant, or whether we're singing modern hymns, or hymns from a century ago, or hymns from the next century. Whatever it is, the other things that we're doing, they're part of the uh, covering. But what they're covering is the actual life of Jesus in the world today. The liturgy is the presence of God in the world today. The liturgy is participation in the life of the Holy Spirit. And the liturgy is the participation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. The Holy, pardon me, the Holy Trinity in the life of the church. Inexhaustible source. You can never run out of something to meditate on. And then, and then sometimes you go back and you, over the same words and the same uh, prayer. And there's, just, there's a beauty in the liturgy for someone who wants to pray. Liturgical prayer enriches personal prayer. And this in turn, in its turn, gives a lively expression to liturgical participation. You know, for the most part, for most of us, that when we make mental prayer, when we try to make mental prayer, it's usually somehow connected with participating in the liturgy, either before Mass or after Mass, um, or saying before or after, after, usually after morning prayer, after evening prayer, those two things which we will discuss at some point, the morning prayer and evening prayer, um, 
that there are the opportunities for mental prayer afterwards because when we participate in the liturgy, either the, the Eucharist, the Mass, or the Liturgy of the Hours, when we participate in the liturgy, we are reading the words of Scripture that inform, information, influence our minds. There's a big thing, I think, currently, at least from what I understand, about influencers, people who have influence on, on other people. And it reminds me of someone in terms of the word that we used to use, the word witness, witnessing to, witnessing to the presence of Christ. It reminds me of something that Pope uh, Paul VI said to a meeting of secular Carmelites in 1970 in Rome, October of 1970. He said, modern man does not listen to teachers, but once witnesses. And he said, if he does listen to a teacher, it's because the teacher is also a witness. So the Eucharist, the liturgy, forms us. And as it forms us, it makes us participate more purposefully in the liturgy to become people who, who develop the, the, the flexibility that the Holy Spirit needs us to have in order to be molded into the people, the person and the people that he wants me and us to be. So liturgical prayer, liturgical prayer influences us and because liturgical prayer influences us, we then are influencers by the way, the importance that we give to the sacramental life of the church. In the secular order, a special place is given to the liturgy, understood as God's word celebrated in active hope after being received it, after, after having received it by faith and to commit a commitment to live it in effective love. Wow, that sentence is dynamite. In the second order, special place is given to the liturgy. Eucharist, liturgy of hours. The two main liturgies. Um, if you if you have available uh, somewhere in the, uh, to read the general instruction on the liturgy there is, there's the general instruction on the Eucharist, the Mass, and there's but also there's a general instruction written by in this, at the time of the Second Vatican Council or shortly afterwards, the general instruction on the liturgy of the hours. Why do we say the liturgy of the hours? We know, certainly, we, it's easy to understand why the, the Eucharist is part of the liturgical life of the Church. And because we celebrate the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, the real, pres the real presence. Even though, at least in the United States, and I'm sure in other Western countries, uh, the belief in the real presence, the belief that Jesus is present in the Blessed Sacrament, has gone down, down, down. Among Catholics, the number of Catholics who go to Mass on Sunday but do not believe that Jesus is present in the Blessed Sacrament afterwards. Um, it's it's a, a shame. So we, of course, we as secular, as Carmelites, as Carmelites, just in our Carmel life, find the importance of the Eucharist uh, to be something essential to our lives. And we give witness to it. We give witness to it by the, by, by the people walk in church now, just walk in and sit down. Um, but we, we, we walk in, we walk into the church, we genuflect or bow if we're not able to genuflect, and we kneel down if there's a kneeler available. Um, 
Or, or if we sit, we sit in silence before the Blessed Sacrament. I, I remember, I'm sure most of you, any of you who are my age, remember um, when you were younger having to confess, go to confession because you talked in church. Now, sometimes the church is so noisy. After Mass on Sunday, it's a little bit quiet in, in before Mass, but after Mass, people just begin to speak, talking in church, sitting in church and conversing and celebrating. So, I think we have to be aware of the witness that we give to the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. It's a reminder, presence, presence. We will understand the importance of that presence in our lives and understand how it is important for us to be present in the life of the world and what kind of presence, it's, it presence the world needs from us. But we'll get to that. So, in the second order, a special place is given to the liturgy understood as God's word celebrated in active hope. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> active hope. Celebrated in active hope. We are not passively hoping. We're not just sitting back and waiting. We're looking. Active hope means to look forward to. Because of because we know we know because it says if, uh, after ha after having God's word and celebrating from God's word. In act of hope, after having received it by faith. Faith, the theological virtue of faith, is the virtue that believes because God has revealed it. We don't, we, we don't believe in, we don't believe because it makes sense logically. But we know it's true because we believe it, because it, do you remember the act of faith? Oh my God, I firmly believe that you're one God and three divine persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe that your divine Son became man. And at the end, um, I, I, I believe this, I believe what I believe because you have revealed it who can neither deceive nor be deceived. In this faith, I intend to live and to die. We believe because God revealed it. Where did God reveal it? God revealed it in his word. God revealed it in the sacraments. He is present. So we receive it in faith. Because we have received it in faith, we have this act of hope in our celebration. We're not desperate. The word desperate, sperare, means to hope in Latin. Desperate means without hope. We are, not, we are not people without hope. Even in the darkest of confusions, we, 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 because of our faith, because we know that God reveals himself to us, we can hope actively. And the commitment, having received the faith, and the commitment to live it, live God's word, in effective love. Love that is effective, not love that is emotional, not love that is um, a, a movement of the uh, emotions, but a love that is concrete. It's always struck me as something I need to remind myself from the letter of St. James. Um, in the, in, the New, in the New Testament. What good does it do for you to say to your brother who has no clothes, stay warm, who has nothing to eat, uh, be healthy, if you don't do something to, to supply for the needs of the people around you? If Our love has to be effective. Um, I can't forgive in my mind without forgiving in my heart those who offend me. I can't ask for forgiveness 
um, interiorly without asking for forgiveness, exteriorly, there's something, there's something not incarnate about our love if it remains something that is passive, that's something that doesn't change us. The spiritual life means to change. To live the spiritual life means that we change. We have, none of us, until we're dead, none of us have arrived at perfection until we're dead. Then, we're, when, then when we become perfectly dead, we are deadly perfect. So, uh, St. John Henry Newman said, to grow is to change, to become perfect is to change often. And so it's the liturgy, the celebration of the liturgy, in faith, in hope, in charity, in love. It's the celebration of the liturgy that moves us to grow. It moves us to grow, it moves us to contribute to the world around us. So that the active charity, charity is not an emotion, charity is not a feeling. Charity is a way of living in faith and hope. And it must be effective love. Next sentence. The sacraments, especially the Eucharist and reconciliation, need to be lived as signs and instruments of the freeing action of God and as an encounter with the Paschal Christ present in the ecclesial community. The sacraments. What is a sacrament? The sacrament is our sign instituted by Christ to give grace. It's my de the definition I learned some years ago when I was in school. What is a sacrament? A sacrament is an hour sign instituted by Christ to give grace. So the sacraments are a way of Christ's participation in the life of the world. Jesus with the Father and the Holy Spirit is active in the world because of the sacraments. Especially, the, there's a liturgy involved with every sacrament. There's a rite, a rite, R-I-T-E, the way the prayers are said, what prayers are necessary, what things are necessary, what, what, what created physical things are necessary in order for the sacrament to be present, for Jesus to be present. And we call the Jesus' presence in the Eucharist, the real presence, because it, after Mass, when the priest closes the tabernacle door and put, opens the tabernacle door and puts the hosts that have not been used for Holy Communion but will be used later for Holy Communion, and closes the door and fixes the tabernacle so that things are in order, that's the real presence. Jesus really is present. We don't just walk by and as if talking to somebody else. Uh, we acknowledge that presence. We, we genuflect when we come into church. We, we bow when we come into church. We show some sign. Um, so the sacraments, especially the Eucharist and reconciliation. I am, uh, when I was in the seminary, in Philadelphia, St. Charles Borromeo, we went to confession every Friday of the year. It was not an option. Every Friday of the year, we went to confession. There were 17 or 18 priests that came to the seminary, and we had a choice. We could go to any one of them, but we had to stand. and pump. Even if we didn't need to go to confession, we could go up and ask for a blessing. But the sacrament of reconciliation is an important part of the spiritual life because the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of reconciliation, going to confession, will never, ever, ever let us get too proud. Um, we, we, all, we have to start, it's like St. Teresa in the, in the interior castles, the rooms of self-knowledge, the first rooms, the very difficult rooms, the, the longest time it takes us to really know ourselves, to be able to, to not just to know ourselves, to be able to admit, admit who we are, what our weaknesses are. 
Uh, it's, it's very, you, you know how important the virtue of humility is from reading St. Teresa. Sacrament of penance is an important part of our discovery of our limitations. And the discovery of our limitations is a beautiful thing because we know that within those limitations is where we are. Those limitations are our boundaries. We, we, we get very upset about people violating our boundaries when, when, when they somehow or another intrude into our lives. But we need to get upset about we need to get upset about the times we go beyond our boundaries because when we go beyond our boundaries, that's what sin is. And so, so like, I remember saying something that an Orthodox, one of the fathers of the Orthodox Church, has said um, about uh, people who cry when they go to confession, cry because they're going to confession because they, they, he said, they shouldn't cry when they go to confession, they should cry when they sin. And be joyful when they go to confession because they're being forgiven. Uh, it, it, it's going away. Um, and, and it's giving us strength to uh, improve. God is improving us to the sacrament of penance. Um, it's, 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 it's no, when I was the diocesan priest in Philadelphia, before becoming a Carmelite, every parish I was stationed in, that every parish in the diocese, 300 and some parishes, 315 or something like that parishes at that time, every parish had priests hearing confessions every Saturday from 4 to 6 and 7 to 9. At six o'clock, we ate dinner, but we had we came back from confession, back from hearing confession, and went back to go hearing confession, and we had dinner in the middle, and we we heard for two hours in the afternoon, two hours in the evening, and it was constant. People came to confession. That's all. That's almost fifty years ago. Now I think many parishes um, don't have. Scheduled confessions, or scheduled confessions that way, they might have thirty minutes on a on a Saturday morning, or thirty minutes on a Sunday morning, or before mass, or the, 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 or, or please call. I've seen this time. Please call to make arrangements for confession, as if it's something ex extraordinary to do. It used to be something ordinary to do, and I think it's. I think it's missing in, the, in, the, in a lot of people's lives. The beauty of the sacrament of penance. The, the, the beauty of reconciliation. There's, there's so many things in our lives that we need reconciling before we can joyfully go to heaven almost. Um, and this is the sacrament of reconciliation. It should be a freeing experience. When we sin, we experience our limitations. When we're forgiven, we experience our freedom. So, think about the, uh, the place of the sacrament of reconciliation in your life. The sacraments, especially the Eucharist and reconciliation, need to be lived as signs and instruments of the freeing action of God and as an encounter with the Paschal Christ present in the ecclesial community. The ecclesial community is the church, the church with the big C, the, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The experience of the liturgy in the reconciliation and the Eucharist celebrated also through the Liturgy of the Hours, that experience brings us closer, more part of the church. Um, and and it, it affects our presence. 
it's what makes us have influence in the lives of our children and our grandchildren. You may not see it now. You may not be alive long enough to see the effects of what you do or what you believe or how you love God. But the effects will be there for your children and your grandchildren. We pray. We hope. So the sacraments, especially the Eucharist and the Reconciliation, need to be lived as signs, witness, testify, as signs and instruments of the freeing act of God. If you go to confession regularly and participate in the Eucharist as much as is possible, then you will, signs and instruments, you will be influencing the people around you because you will change. You will change. You will grow. And that that freeing action of God in your life becomes an action that may, will help to free people around you, people in your family, people that you work with, the people who are your neighbors, the people who are in the parish that you're in. So the ecclesial community is a place, is a place of witness. And the first witness is forgiven, forgiveness. The second witness after forgiveness is the celebration of the presence of God. St. Teresa says in some place in the book of her life, I think about chapter 28, um, what, a, what a joy it is to find that you're not alone. Oh, we, 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 we're able to accompany other people in their sorrows because we have been accompanied in our sorrows. We have been strengthened in our desires. So, the sacraments, especially the Eucharist and the need to be lived as signs and instruments of the free and action of God and as an encounter with the Paschal Christ, Christ who is risen. Uh, the Paschal Christ present in the ecclesial community. I think that's a lot. I, I'm going to stop here in the, the next video I'll do, the next week. I will do the rest of this number 23. But I think uh, to, for, the, for the present, um, that this is very much enough for, to, to try to comprehend, to try to think about. How important is the liturgy to you? How important is it in your life? Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. The power of forgiveness that we experience in, in celebrating in celebrating the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So, um, the liturgy, the place of the liturgy in the, your life of prayer as a source, as an influence in your life, and how it becomes a way in which you can influence the lives of others. Thank you very much. God bless you, man. Again, subscribe. If you want to subscribe to this video CD for OCDS, to this series of videos, um, that becomes apparent to me. I didn't think about it automatically when I first started to make these videos. This is video number 58. But they will be around a long time after I'm not around. Um, and so I, I'm very conscious, I've be, become very conscious of that uh, as a responsibility to help, to uh, help you to understand the importance of your vocation. It may be the priest, except for the sacrament of matrimony where the parent, the people who are ma 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 the ma married couple are the ministers of the sacrament. But it may be the other, the other sacraments, especially the Eucharist, which is the most 
obviously present one. It may be uh, the priest who celebrates the liturgy as the celebrant of the liturgy. But we all celebrate the liturgy when we participate in it. So, uh, as you pick up your missal, uh, as you go to Mass, as you pick up your Ibada, your, pardon me, your Liturgy of the Hours, um, to say prayers, remember, you are part, this is making you more part of the Church and you're doing this because you are part of the Church. And so you will become a witness to the presence of God in the world through your participation in liturgy, which then influences your personal prayer. God bless you. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. Hit the little bell for notifications so that you can be notified of when new videos are present. And see you next week. Thank you for your uh, support and thank you for your participation. God bless you.